So we will start the session today. So I hope my voice is audible. I think so. Yes. Yeah. So module three, chapter one, that is inheritance. And module three, we got two parts. One is inheritance, another is interface. So. So I think now it's started. Yeah. So let's start as soon as possible. So inheritance, correct? So as I told, the first part is inheritance. Second part is interface. So the moment we see inheritance, so we have to remember only two things. So one is super class, correct? Another is the base class. So that is basically, let's take, there are two classes. So instead of sell, uh, telling super class, I'll say parent class, parent and child. So obviously a, pa a child will inherit some of the properties from the parents, correct? So similarly, we will be using the term here super, super class in the base class, correct? And also we will be studying about the keyword super also in this. Okay, so that is something what we are going to use in the programs also. So in Java terminology, the inherited class is a super class and the inheriting class is the subclass. Yeah, whichever has the properties of the parent class, that is nothing but what the subclass or the base class, as I say. Then inheritance basics. So as you can see here, we are using what a keyword extends. Correct? So first thing is we are going to create a super class that is a class A. Correct. Then I'm going to extend that class by using the keyword extent. So this class B is there, right? So whatever is there in class A, the ENJ, whatever you can see here, the system of doubt, doubt, print, and whatever is there in this will be there in what? The class B itself. Okay. So class B is what basically the child class. And then I'm using a program here, void sum system dot out dot print and I adding all of those things. I plus J plus K that is basically plus I plus J plus K. Then I'm going to define another class, class space, class name, simple inheritance. Correct. So this is my class name space object name is equal to new. And then I'm going to call the two things A and B. This is basically my constructors. Okay, so similarly for B also, I'm doing the same thing. I'm creating an object. I'm gonna I'm gonna call the class B. This is the constructor. Then I'm gonna assign the values because end of the day, what I have to do, I have to add everything. So super object dot i that is my super class is equal to ten. J is twenty. Similarly for subclass, I've taken k. As you can see here in the class B class i. Sorry, in the class A, I taken only ij variable. Correct. In the next one, I taken k variable. The end of the day, what I do, I have to add the three things i plus j plus k. Correct. So basically, what I am doing, I am taking the variables from what class A. In the sense class B is taking the variables from class A. Simple only. See, when we are uh, when we started studying the programs, we all studied what I plus J plus K or A plus B plus C, correct? Simple sum programs. So here, what I'm going to do, I'm creating a class and also I'm creating a subclass and subclass will have all the properties of the parent class. So same thing only. And then I'm going to add the three things, I, J and K. So seven, eight, nine, they're given. I'm just going to add everything. So first thing is for the contents of the super class, I and J, 10 and 20. Then what is the next thing? Contents of the sub object that is ij that is seven and eight. And then k is what? Nine. So if I'm adding everything, nine plus seven plus eight, I'll be getting 24. So but the important learning in this particular program is I'm going to use the keyword extent. That's the only thing. Okay. Member access and inheritance. So suppose if I am putting 
private. As you can see here, private, right? Correct. So here, instead of public, I given private. Now class B extends class A. I'm using the extent. But what is there in the private? J. J is the variable which is there in the private. Correct. But now if I'm going to call J. Correct. If I'm going to call J, then I won't be able to call it. Simple as that. It will throw an error. Simple as that. It will throw an error. Why? Because it is it is declared as private. But if I am putting here public, I will be able to call it. Okay. So guys, if you, if you didn't understand, no need to worry. Once the class is over, I'll help you out. Okay. So simple thing is if uh, member access. See, what I have told here, what I have told here is a child class or a base class can what access all the features of the parent class or the super class. Okay. Parent class or the super class. But if I put something called private, see normally class A, what is that here? Private in J is there, no? So if I'm putting a prefix private, then class B will not have access. Even though class B, I'm saying that class B extends A, which means what? Whatever is there in, whatever is there in A, class B should access it. But if I'm putting it in class, if I'm putting a private thing, then it cannot access. In the sense, the total is I plus J. Correct? So there will be an error. In the sense, J is declared as what? Private. But if it is public here, I can access it. Okay, so that is the error. Then Rust is a simple program. Then let's say the box, height, depth, and weight. So class box, what is width, height, depth? Then obviously I'm considering the clone of the object. So class name space, what is this? Passing the object to the constructor. Yes, so width, height, and depth. Object dot width, object dot height, and object dot depth. Then width is equal to W. Again, both, what is this constructor? Parametric, yes, yes, the parametric constructor. In the sense, I can put the arguments inside the constructor. Width is equal to W, height is equal to H, depth is equal to D. Then if I'm putting width is equal to minus one, so which means there is no dimension. See, first of all, the width cannot be negative or the height of width cannot be negative. So there is dimensionless. So these are the different examples where we are displaying what, how to create a constructor within the class. Next one, box double length, width is equal to height, depth is equal to length, then double volume. So what is volume of the box? Width into height into depth. That's it. So all of these things with the box constructor. And then if I want to take the or display the output, correct? Then I have to give what system dot outdoor printer and the volume of my box is what volume. All of these things I have to do it in the program. And again, box weight. This is box weight is a class name, and this is the object name, new box weight. So then if, if I want, I can give the Dimensional value 10, 20, 15, 34.3, whatever it is. That is because width, height, depth, and weight. Four things are there. Okay. Then it will be easy. And then, as I told in the beginning of the session, we'll be using something called super. That is this, the super keyword. So it is called two general form. The first called super class constructor. And second, second is what, suppose if some class is hidden, then also I can hide it. One second, it's getting it called. So yeah, now let us see the super class and its uses. So again, super argument list, correct? So 
let's see the program here and let's see where we are using it. It's so the same program, the box program, same thing, whatever we have implemented, the same thing. So I'll just go back to the previous. Okay, and you can see here the constructors here. Yeah, the constructor, what we have defined. Yes. So in the same constructors, I'll be putting what the super keyword. Okay. The super keyword I will be putting. In the sense, as you can see here, while I'm considering the clone of the object, super and the object name. Correct? Then what is here? Super WHD, calling the super class constructor. So always in the constructor, the first thing what I have to do is I have to create what? I have to create the objects by using super. And here also again, box weight, the class name. Again, inside the constructor, I'm putting what? Super keyword and when the cube is uh, created that term also I'm putting super so end of the day I have to put super that's the only thing okay so we can easily access the the base class can access the super class okay and second one is super dot member okay so the second form of super is most of the situation which member names of subclass hide members by the same name in the super class so let's see the same example as you can see here using a super to overcome name hiding so suppose if you don't understand this once the session is over i'll help you out with this so no need to worry again class b extends class a int i the variable correct then what i'm going to do super dot i is equal to a so this is my class b correct and what i'm doing int i so this i hides the i in a in the sense in i also I have a variable i, right? Correct. But in b also, I am what I am putting, I am initializing another variable with integer i. Now, super dot i is equal to a, which means this i is what? In b, in the sense, second one is i is equal to b. So this meaning is i is in b. So first one, it will always take what? Not the b value, what is here? Correct. But it will take what? The i of a, this is this i. This i only I'm accessing through this. Second one is i is equal to b. That is my i in this particular class. That's the only thing. So, see here, system order printer i in super class is equal to uh, plus super dot i. Next one is what subclass plus i. So, whatever is there in the i value in the super class, that is in the class a, that will be displayed here. Whatever is there in the base class b will be displayed here. And then, as you can see here, new b one comma two. So one is what i in the sub i in the main class a, and two is what in the subclass of the base class b. So the same program here, the default constructor. I think yes. So this is all about the constructor calling. So with this, we'll end the first session of this particular class. Then later on, we'll see the next one.